So that's the so-called black man in America to a T. That's right. Read. If they sit before thee uh -huh. as my people, uh -huh. and they hear the word. Like you, brother, this is not the, your first time hearing this. No. Now you came up here, you took your phone out, right, to record. No. Read. Yes, but they will not yeah. do them. But what? But, but they, they will not do them. But they will what? But they will not do them. them. That's the thing with our people, man. It's not our people. It's not that our people don't want to listen all the time. They're not going to do nothing. Our people don't want to keep the commitment. They don't want to change. You want to be stuck in your ways, brother. To accept yourself, you'd rather be black, even though you know you're Israelite, it's because you don't want to accept what comes with this. You understand? Meaning you got to change your ways. And that's not an easy thing to do. Read. For with their mouth, they show much love. For with their mouth, they show much love. But their heart goeth after their covetousness. See that, man? All right, that's, that's our people, man. With your lips, you say all the right things. Right, you believe in the Bible, you all believe in the Bible. You said all the right things, man. You understand? But when we go into the scriptures and show you things, and I ask you a question, you make a joke and go back and say something stupid. You understand? We, these these brothers that's not that's out here right now, they sacrifice their life, man. That's right. Brothers have given up things in the world. Brothers have turned, given up, lost family members, man. Right? Lost friends in the world, man. They've given everything up to come to studying day and night, man. Just to come and edify people like you, man. That's right. Why our job is to bring the elect back to the Father so that they may receive salvation. Let it rain, our job is to save souls. Make it make You understand? Go ahead. Verse 32. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that have a pleasant voice. See, the Israelites, we have become entertainment. So a lot of people like to watch videos. They like to come up, pull their cameras out, make us a spectacle. You understand? Read. And can play well on an instrument. Read. For they hear the for they hear thy words, but they do them not. Here's the point. But what? But they, they do, do them, them not. not. They're not gonna do a damn thing. You'll hear the words, but you're not gonna do what the Bible says. Go ahead. Verse 33. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet have been among them. Then it's going to be too late. Bring this right. up. The book of Zechariah, chapter 7 and verse 11. Yo. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears. Read it again from the top. So like, but they refused to hearken. But they refused to listen to the words of the, of the Lord, man. Right? Lee? And pulled away the shoulder uh -huh. and stopped their ears. Yeah, and, and stopped their, their ears. ears. Brother, what does God call his people? Yeah, what does God call his people? Good what is question. their name? We just read it to you. No, we just they have a name. They are his children. What does he call them? What is their name? Brother, you playing games. Why did you say his children, human beings, Israelites? Come on, man. What is, what is it? I'm trying to show you something. I'm asking you questions for a reason. But you do know the answer. Because you came up and said it. You understand? And then you told me you're black and you would say you was playing. Right? And then I just asked you again and you gave me three answers before giving me the right answer. Right, 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 right. Why, brother? Why not just say, we're the Israelites? That's right. Who? What does God call his people? The Israelites. Israelites, right? We are the Israelites. Do you know what that means? Somebody give me that. Um, uh, Genesis 32 and uh, I think 28. You got to bring it up. The book of Genesis, chapter 32 and verse 28. Because yeah. why, do, why, do why, do why, do why do we call ourselves black? Because you said that proudly. Right? What is the meaning of What does that mean? Because you, you're literally not black. So sometimes somebody may call themselves something that it's, it's a meaning behind it. You understand? So you could understand it. Why do we call ourselves black if you're not black at all? And you're far from black. What does that mean? What does black mean? Black means Negro. Black means Negro? But why do they call you that? They called you a Negro, right, when you came. All right, read this. Hold on, you said what, brother? Black, black, black. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Huh? I mean, we were raised and so we were taught that, but black, what do you mean it's in our bloodline? Yo, 
Yeah, but Africa, right, is a continent. And you got many nations that come out of Africa. Many dark-skinned people. None of them call themselves black. You understand? So I'm trying to show you something. It's it's a it's it's a term that was placed on our people. Yes, give, me the, give me the book of Psalm chapter 44, verse 14. Wake them up. Black means what color do you wear to a funeral, brother? What color do you wear to a wedding? Black black means wickedness, evil, right. void of hope, right. lack or lack of hope. Right. You understand? What does white mean? Pureness. Right. Right? Righteousness. That's right. Right? Because the white man is not white, just like you're not black. Right. So the Lord doesn't call people colors. Right? A color in a crayon box is not in your bloodline. Right. That is a lie that was told to our people. That's right. You understand? We are more than a color. Right. Now, read this real quick. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 44, verse 14. Thou makest us a byword. What the Lord say? Thou makest us a byword. Black. Don't make black is a byword. That's not our name. When we got off the slave ships, we weren't calling ourselves blacks or Negroes. You understand? Then what did they call us after that? Why do they keep changing our name, brother? They changed our name and they called us what? Color? Right? Nigger? Afro-American? We were calling ourselves after our hairstyle, brother, for a long time. We didn't become African-American until the 1980s. Right! That's a new thing. If we were African, brother, why didn't they call us African when we got off the slave ships? Right. Why did they choose to call us a Negro? Right. Let me show you. Give me the Zondervan real quick. Bring that out. Let me show you that. Somebody, anybody got the? Somebody grab it. We just need one brother to get it. We got it right here, King. We got it. Give me how real quick. That's right, but you can use a color as a description, right? Right. But does that does that mean that's who you are? Right. 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 I am black but beautiful. Or I am dark skinned and beautiful. You understand? Right. Read this. Solomon wasn't literally black. Right. Right. Read this. Ham, the youngest son of Noah. So Ham, you listening, brother? Listen to this. The, do you you believe in the Bible, right? The Lord repopulated the earth after the flood with three men, right? Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Listen to this. Ham, the youngest son of Noah. Born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of the eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor. He became the father, Reed, yeah. of the dark race. Because everybody on the earth was dark skinned during this time. So Ham was one of the was the father of one of the dark nations of people. Come on. But not the Negro. Wait a minute, you listening, brother? But what? But, but not, not the, the Negroes. Negroes. But not the Negroes. First of all, in the Bible, you don't read, no, God never called nobody African. Africa is a land that was named after a so-called white man, a Roman emperor, right? Named Scipio Africanus, right? Give me Psalms 49 and 11. He defeated Hannibal during the Punic Wars, all right? And he renamed that land after him. The Bible calls those people Hamites. They descend from the man Ham. Right. Read. But not the Negro. But what? But, but not, not the, the Negro. There's a distinction between those so-called Africans or Hamites and the Negroes. This is a different type of dark-skinned people. They're not the same. And if you ask a real African today, they don't call themselves African. We only say that in America because we don't know who we are. They're going to say I'm Kenyan. Right? I'm Ethiopian. They're going to give you a tribe. They have a language. We the only ones calling ourselves a whole continent. Right. Because we don't understand as many nations over there. Many different languages. Read. But the Egyptians. But the Egyptians, they have mics. They right. Africans. Read. The Ethiopians. Ethiopians, they Africans. They have mics. Libyans. Libyans are African. And the Canaanites. But not the Negroes. So who the hell are these people that they went to the west coast of Africa and brought to and made slaves? Right. Who are they? Make them up. Read this real quick. This is the book of... Say what the Lord said about the Israelites and the Africans. Come on. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 11 and verse 7. Bring it out. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord do not put a difference. Hold on. God did what? Do not put a difference. The Lord put a difference, brother. Read. Between the Egyptians. Between the Africans. Read. Right. And Israel. And you. Right. Just because we dark skinned, most people on, on, in the world are dark skinned. 
Only the so-called white man doesn't have color in his skin. Right. So most nations are dark-skinned people. But the Lord put a difference between the Israelites and the Africans, so-called right. Africans today. Right? Give me Deuteronomy 7 and uh, 6. Bring this up. This is the book of Psalms. Chapter 49 and verse The brother got up out of here? Yeah, so he yeah. Made, no, but he was just saying he he was like yo, I, I you know I love it. I'm gonna learn. He, he said he, you know he said. It. Okay, well he could have got sobered up. Yeah, right, right, right. Read that. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 49 and verse 11. Yeah. There in were thoughts. So listen to this, brother. So we say things like I'm black, or we say I'm African. We call ourselves American, right? But when we read the Bible, the Lord never called any nations by these names. Right. Read. Is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands. They call their lands. The Lord said these people were going to call their lands, brother. You listening? Like when the so called white man and these other nations go into these lands and conquer the, these lands, they're going to rename the lands. Read. They call their lands after their own names. After their own names. Now we call ourselves by their names. Right. Like America. America's stolen land. Right. Right? Renamed after Amerigo Vespucci, another white man. Uh, an Italian map maker. So when we call ourselves American, we call it ourselves by the name of the white man. Right. Give me Isaiah 65 and 15. When we say African American, those are two white men. You understand? So we're not African. We're not black. Who are we? You understand? We are God's chosen people. That's the world's best kept secret. Okay? Our enemies have taken a lot of time. All right, destroying history, right? Iconoclasm, whitewashing images, making the Bible look white when the Bible says that dark skinned people. You understand, like the sister just brought out? Or Sister Lil? Go ahead. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 65 and verse 15. The Bible, the Bible prophesied that these things will happen to a special people because they rebelled against their God. Read this. And ye shall leave your name for a curse. And ye shall leave your name for a curse. So Lord, how y'all doing? I pray to the Most High. Y'all know who y'all y'all know who we out here doing? Okay, I pray to the Most High. All praise. All praise. I'm me and the brother having a dialogue about our people in the Bible. You believe in the Bible? Who 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 does God's chosen people in the Bible? Y'all Christian? Okay, okay, but you believe in the Bible. Okay, did you know God has a chosen people in the Bible? Who, who are they? Huh? The Israelites. Right, you know about the Israelites, right? Who are they today? That's what we got it. We're going to figure that out. That's right. All right, that's the world's best kept secret because who did Christ come for? Wake them up, man. Does it matter who we are? Is it important? Does it matter to know who you are? It does. All right, does it matter when it comes to salvation? Okay, why does it matter when it comes to salvation who you are? Can anybody be saved? They just believe? But I'm saying though, is Christ coming to save everybody no matter who they are? Who is he coming to save? No matter what nation they are? Brother, we the Israelites, alright brother? Don't forget that. Alright, these brothers out here every weekend, alright? That's right. Alright, for sure. Alright. So now let's let's go. Give me Matthew 15. Give me Matthew 1 and 21 first. Let's read this. You said the sister got a question? How you doing, sis? All right, all right, go ahead. The book of Matthew, chapter 1 and verse 21. Bring it and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Y'all believe in Jesus? Okay, read. For he shall save his people. No, those that just believe. For he shall save his people. Who is Jesus coming to save? Who is his people? Israelites. You understand? So the Israelites that believe. You understand? So it's important for us to know who we are because we've been lied to. All right? What do our people call themselves today? African American? We not that. Right? They call themselves black, nigga, depending on what they've been through. You know, Jake you know, Jake could tell you anything. I'm my mama's son. I've heard that before. Right? I'm human. I'm a man. Right? I'm a Christian. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a real nigga. We, we get all of that. But God is dealing with nations of people. We all descend from men that come out of this Bible. Right. You understand? What I call? Go go back to Deuteronomy. Let's go back to Deuteronomy. All right? Yeah, give me this real quick. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art in holy people. And this is what our people need to know, man, so we can stop killing each other and stop hating each other. You understand? 
this is what needs to be taught and this is what we don't learn. Read. For thou art an holy people. God said his people are holy. You know what holy means? Holy means set apart. That means we're not like everybody else. We're not supposed to be assimilating and following the other nations. We're supposed to be the light. We're supposed to be the standard. You understand? We are holy people. Read. Unto the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people. No, he chose us to be an ordinary people. To, to be, be a special people. people. Just be like everybody else. To, to be, be a special people. people. We are special people. We are special people naturally. Go turn on the, the NBA. Right? Turn on the NFL. Right. You understand? Cut the radio on. You understand? Hey, go to a restaurant and try some food. Right. We are we the salt of the earth. Right. We not we do everything better. That's right. That's natural. Everybody knows that. But we don't act like that. That's right. We don't treat our brothers and sisters as so as we're special. Teacher. Read. Unto himself above. Below. Above. above. Now we equal. Above. above. God said his people, whoever they are, are above. Read. All people. What do you say? All people. But that sounds racist. Oh. That sounds not right. In this society, if you spoke like that about your people, they would call you racist. That's right. But this is what this is God talking about you. That's right. Oh. And your brothers and sisters. Come on. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth, the Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number uh -huh. than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. Uh -huh. But because the Lord loved you, why? But because the Lord loved you, the Lord say, but because the Lord loved you, because the Lord chose a people to himself that he loved, man. Right. But what happens if God loves us while we on the bottom? Why do we go through slavery? Why do we get treated like? Why do we get called out of our name? Why do we? Why are we the most disrespected? Right. You know, why don't we love each other as a nation? Good question. If God says He loves us, what happened? Get into it, Give me the book of Psalms, chapter one hundred seven. Get into it. Up. And I think I want verse six. Get out. What happened to God's chosen people? What happened to this holy nation, right? right. Let him know. Bring it out. This is the book of Psalms, chapter one hundred seven, and verse six. Bring it out. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them. Start, read up. Uh, three verse 10. Read this is the book of Psalms, chapter 107 and verse 10. Read read up. Such as sit in darkness uh -huh. and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction uh -huh. and iron, uh -huh. because they rebound. Are we bound in affliction and iron? Yeah, our people was brought over here in chains. That's right. Ah. Why? Because they rebound. What do we do? Because they rebound read. against the words of God. Against, against the, the words, words of God. God. This nation of people, whoever they are, they rebelled against the words of the most high power. That's right. The Lord gave us a gift, brother. Right. Brother, imagine you give me a gift. Let's say you gave me a painting, brother, and it cost five thousand dollars. You understand? You know I like art and you gave me that gift. The next time you come to my house and you look in the trash can and you see that gift that I gave you, how would you feel, brother? You'll feel disrespectful. You understand? Well, the Lord gave us the greatest gift. He gave us law, statutes, and commandments. That's right. You understand? Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 15. The Lord gave us a gift. He didn't give to no other nation. He chose us and gave us, all right, the laws and commandments to uphold. All right? And we made a covenant with God. That's right. Listen to what the Lord said. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Bring it out. But it shall come to pass. If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Who's, you know who the, who the Bible's talking to? Because the Bible's not directed to all people. Who is, in Deuteronomy, who is God speaking to? You know what people? Go to Deuteronomy 1 and 1 for the brother. Got it. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 1. Yo. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel. To the children of the Moabites. To the children of Israel. Israel. The Hamites. To the, to the children, children of Israel. Israel. The Edomites. To the children of Israel. Who's God talking to? The children of Israel. He's not talking to everybody. Go back to 15. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments. Some of his commandments. All his commandments. The Lord said we have to keep his laws. That's right. We have to do everything that he said. Come on. And his statues, which I command thee this day, that all these curses, all these what? All, all these, these curses. curses. If we don't, brother, God is talking to a whole nation. All these curses, punishments, ass whoopings, brother, judgments. Read. Shall come upon thee and overtake thee. God is going to judge a nation of people. These curses will be reoccurring. 
This is how we know who God's chosen people are in these last days. All right, give me, read, um, give me, bring, pick a curse, any curse. Verse 16, cursed should not be in the city. So a nation of people will be cursed in the cities. Now, if you take the Bible and you read that, can every nation agree with that and relate to it? Is all nations cursed in the cities throughout the world? What people predominantly is on the bottom and cursed? Getting shot down by the police. All right, there's only signs we got. Go ahead. And cursed shall not be in the field. Who's cursed in the cotton field, brother? Sugar cane field. Our people, man. All right, we picked seven trillion dollars worth of cotton. Right. And we set up America's economy. All right, what, what do we have to show for it? We last hired at first fire. Right. You understand? We get paid the least. Right? Somebody hold this sign up right here. Yeah. Look at this, brother. This is this is a famous picture. They, made, they just finally made a movie about this. And they made a movie about it because of Israelites. Right. All right, right. We made this image right here popular. Right. This is important, man. This is spiritual. You see this elder's back? All right, that's, that's my grandfather, man. Right. That's my uncle. That's my brother, man. That's my cousin, man. All right, what's his name? Wilt Peter, man. That's his name. You know why this happened to this brother? You know why, brother? Because we transgress the laws of God. Right. We're reading this judgment out the Bible. This is a this didn't happen when Moses wrote it. God is telling you, if you don't listen to me, all these things are going to happen to you. You're going to be cursed in the field. You understand? Cursed in the cities. Getting your back beat in front of your family, brother, that's a curse. You understand? Yeah, butt breaking. All of that, man. Right. All of those things happened to our people. It didn't happen to everybody. You understand? Read on. Verse 17. Give me verse, um, give me uh, 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. The Lord said, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given to other people. Whose children were given to other people? Who walks around with uh, the, with their end? The people who enslaved them, who have the same last names as them. Who speak the same language as them? Wake them up, huh? Who goes to their schools to learn, to get an education? Right. right. All right, read. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hands. This is prophecy. When Master Johnson came to Master Jackson's plantation, when there was an auction and he wanted to take your newborn baby and move him all the way to Jackson, Mississippi, it was nothing they could do to get that child back. Imagine being a mother and you birthed a child, and the moment your child is comes out, it's taken from you, and you never saw it again. You was never able to teach your child anything. Everything they learned came from that plantation. This is what you have today. Right. This is where we are today. Come on. Uh, verse, give me, give me uh, 48. Verse, give me 47. Verse 47. So we're reading the different curses. God said all these curses and we read. We're skipping around. We're reading curses and punishment that's going to identify who we are in these last days. Because one nation will fit these curses. And there are people who say that these people are the people of the book. They don't fit none of these curses. That's right. Read. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. Because our people don't serve God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. We, we do it as if it's a burden unto us. Right. So a lot of brothers forget that. That's one of the reasons too. It's not just keeping the commandments. Brothers got their fringes on, keeping the Sabbath day. But you can't wait for the Sabbath is over. Right? You're dragging your foot to come to camp. You really don't want to be here. You're forcing it. God said you got to do it with joyfulness and gladness. Right. You got to be sincere, man. Right? Read on. For the abundance of all things. Or just something. For the abundance of all things. It's easy to go to that white man, take out that loan, and you get that money, man. Go to that white man, you get that job, he give it to you, praise man. You understand? But to go to the most high for the abundance of, that's, what the, that's all the Lord wants from us, man. You understand? He wants us to trust in him, man. To do what he said, man. To show our love to him as he done for us. The Lord did miracles for us, man. Right. You understand? Right. He destroyed nations for us, man. Right. And we turned our back on the Lord, man. Now this is where we are today. Because he told us from the beginning, if you do it, this is going to happen to you. What else? Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. I said, what? Serve oh, thine enemies. God said, whoever these people are, his chosen people that he loves so much and chose above our people, now you're going to have to serve your enemy now. You understand? Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Why do we go into slavery? Go ask pastor why we went into slavery. He gonna say for the white man, for he wanted labor. 
Or the white man was evil. No, the Lord's going to send an evil enemy against you. Right. This is the curse. Before it happened, he prophesied it. Right. Read. In hunger. In hunger. When you're hungry, brother, you got to serve your enemy. When you want food, brother, you understand? You don't go to your own field like we used to. We don't provide food for ourselves no more. Where do you go for food? Grocery store. Who owns those stores? The corporations. Your enemy. Right. So you got to serve him. You got to go to his job. Wait till he give you a check. All right? You go cash your check and you take out money with his face on it. And he's waiting for you to bring it back because a nigga got to eat. So now you got to give him back the money. All right? That he gave to you for working. All right? At a place that your foreparents built. Right. That's already yours. When God said he made the whole world for your sakes. Right, right, right. Anytime you go buy anything or work for anything, that's the punishment because it's yours already. Right. Imagine you buying your own house from yourself. Shit. You understand? Imagine going buying clothes that are yours. Right? Going to Home Depot to buy lumber and wood that's yours already. Water. You understand? Go ahead. And in thirst. And in thirst. You said water. The Lord said when you thirsty, brother, you got to serve your enemy. Isn't water free? Why do we buy water? Why does the white man get to put it in a bottle, right, and, and come up with a logo and put a label on it and make you pay to quench your thirst? We didn't always have to buy water. It's free. The Lord provides the water. You understand? God said, because you don't want to serve me, I'm going to make you serve your enemy. Since right. you want to follow the other nations, I'm going to make you serve them and see how much they love you. Let's right. see how they treat you. Come on. And in, uh, slack it, slack it, slack it. And in nakedness. And what? And in and nakedness. Naked. Clothes on your back, you got to serve your enemy. Right. Dolce and Gabbana, white man. Ralph Lauren, a white man. You understand? Fendi, a white man. Gucci, right. a white man. Reed, Nike, <laughs> white man. And they use who? Black man to make you go buy it. They use our people to make the Jordan. Jordan don't even own Jordan. Right. You understand? They made trillions of dollars off his name. Read. And, I, and our people die over those shoes, man, and get murdered. Go ahead. The water. Go open the door. Go ahead. And in one of all things. And in one of all things. And in one of all things. The Lord said if you want anything, you got to go to your enemy. Even if you die, you got to pay for a birth certificate. You indebted to this man even in your debt. Right. If you want a driver's license, you got to go to the white man. You understand? Read. And, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Now, who did God say this will happen to? Who did God say these things will happen to? What people? Good question. What people, brother? You read it earlier. What nation is God dealing with? The Israelites. Right? The Israelites. God said he shall do what? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Brother, what is this right here? What is this? What is that? Come closer, brother. You might have to take your glasses off for this and this. Oh, you see it? What is that? What is that, brother? That's a yoke of iron, man. On his neck. Why do you think we have these images? Where's the images of white people with shackles on their neck? Right. It's not. You understand? That's right. Because we will forget. You understand? Read it again. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So not only would you have to serve your enemy in one of all things, not only... Would you have to go to your enemy for an education? Not only would you have to serve your enemy for clothes on your back, but he would also put a yoke of iron on your neck. Because we do that now. But before that, we had yokes of iron on our neck. Before you can go clock in at a job, you understand? Before niggas can stand on the corner and sell dope to each other and shoot each other up, you had a chain on your neck. Right? right? God right. said we would put a chain on our necks, and we had those chains on our necks. Come on. Until how long? Until forever. Until we don't. Are we chained up right now? No. God never said we would always have yokes of iron on our neck. When will we remove the chains? Until he have destroyed thee. Once you was destroyed, brother, the white man can take the chain off and let niggas free. Cause you're just a nigga now. You only gonna shoot a nigga that look like you. You understand? If I got a pit bull on the chain, brother, 
Do I have to chain him up if he's trained? No, I can take him off the train. If I say sit, the dog gonna sit. That's niggas in America. The right. white man took the chains off once we were destroyed already. That's right. You understand? Come on. Give me 46. Just to, prove, just to show you that you're right, brother. Because the Bible also said that we would be discontinued from our heritage. Right. Meaning we would forget about who we are. Right. How will we remember and come back? Give me 46. Okay. These same curses. Read. And they shall be upon thee. And the day is talking about these curses. These curses are on us even in 2023. Read. For a sign. For a what? For, For a, a sign. sign. For who? For, For a, a sign. sign. For a sign. Why do, why do people put signs on buildings? Why does that thing says AC Hotels Marriott? Right? What is the point of putting a sign on the buildings? It's an identifying marker. Right? It, it, it directs you. It leads you. If you want to know where I can find lodging at, that sign lets me know that's a hotel. Right, right, right. If we forget who we are and somebody else say they the Jewish people now and we just niggas and we want to find out who we are, God left us a sign. Right. And what are those signs? These curses. Right. Read. And they should be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. And for a wonder to make us think upon these things. Read. And upon thy seed forever. Oh. Give me 54. Verse 54, so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate. Hey, brother, this is the ultimate court. curse. Check this curse out. Read. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother. Black on black crime. <laughs> they got to call him pastors out here, coming to marches. They call him Al, uh, uh, Al what's his name? Al, Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson. Right, they having marches. Right. Everybody trying to figure out why we destroying ourselves in our neighborhood, why we keep killing each other. Right. But God said, This is why. Because we broke the covenant, He put a curse on us. So now our eyes evil toward each other. And when we see our oppressor, it's all love. You understand? We don't go to the white man neighborhood and shoot it up. No. Nope. We don't go to the people. We have a common enemy. I'm going through the same thing as you. But we take our anger out on each other. Right. We don't go and, and ha not saying that we should do that, but I'm saying if you're going to kill somebody, why would you kill your own? Right. Right. If you're going to commit a murder, why not go commit the murder of the children, okay, that oppressed and murdered your foreparents? Right. Now, I'm not inciting right. violence. I'm just saying that's common sense. Right. God is showing us I, I will be evil toward one another because that's a punishment on us. Right. All right? Read. And toward the wife of his bosom. Domestic violence. And toward the wife of his bosom, read. And toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. How you gonna stay and raise them? Which, which he, he shall leave. leave. You gonna teach them who they are. Which he shall leave. leave. You gonna protect them. Which, which he shall leave. leave. You gonna love his children. Which he shall leave. leave. Who's known for growing up without their fathers? What nation of people is known for having women say, I'm an independent, strong black woman? Right. You've never heard a Chinese woman say, I'm an independent, strong Moabite. Right. She don't talk like that. She ain't with that. She wants her husband. She wants her family structure. She wants to play her role. She wants her children to grow up with her father. She don't want to be strong. She want to be meek and humble and play her part. She want her husband to be strong. That was destroyed by the Lord because of our sins. And how did it happen? The Lord used slavery. So the Lord put curse, proclaimed curses on us and he had it play out a certain way. You understand? And these things our family was taken from. There's a book called the Willie Lynch letter. And the so-called white man breaking it down. That's right. He's explaining to it how he destroyed us. That's right. Uh. Right? I recommend you read it. It'll help you understand the mentality of our sisters. That's right. The mentality of our brothers. Right? right? How you put the light skin against the dark skin. Teach right? The strong against the weaker one. You understand? Put the woman, the black woman, all right, against the black man. And made her hate each other. And how he, he feminized us, man. And took our strength and our power. Raping our daughters in front of us, man. All right? And tying us up so we couldn't do nothing about it. Right? Ultimately, we're showing that God did it. He just used the other nations. He used your enemy and sent them against you. But that same God is going to deliver his people. That's right. You understand? Give me verse 64. Verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee. The Lord said he was going to scatter. They weren't scattered at this time. He's telling them what's going to happen to your family if you don't listen to me. Read. Read. Among all people. We will be scattered amongst all people. That's why you got the Chinese 
So he got his stores in our neighborhood. That's right. Our sisters go to them to get their nails done. That's right. They go to the other nation to get their hair. You got to go to the Elam, the, the Arabs corner store, That's buying right. cigarillos and beer. Right? You got liquor stores in our neighborhood, man. McDonald's everywhere. You understand? We were scattered amongst all these nations, and all these nations benefit and profit off of us because of our sins. Come on. From one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there, thou shalt serve other gods. Now we're going to serve the true God. Thou shalt serve other gods. Give me Hosea 5 and 15. We're not going to serve the true God. When you're going to slavery you under your enemy, right. you're not going to serve the truth. You're going to serve another God that he gave us. Right. Do anybody got Caesar? Put, put this, hold this image up. Yeah, Caesar boys, yeah, this is what was given to our people as God. Right? They said this is the Messiah. And the Messiah is God. Jesus is God. And he's a white boy. Right. Is that Jesus, brother? No. So why would they give that to us? There you go. That's right, brother. That's right. But they can't control us no more because the spirit of the Lord is upon us in these last days. Right? Read. Uh, it's like it. uh, and, and then thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Brother, what's the number one religion in the world? Christianity. And what's that symbol? A cross. That's the, the Lord wasn't going to say y'all going to be in Christianity. That's that wood. I see you tucked that thing in. Huh? Oh, that was, okay, okay. That was the other brother. Go ahead. And what else? And stone. And what? And stone. And stone. What's the stone? What's the number two religion our people are into? After Christianity, a nigga go to jail and come out of what? A Muslim. And what do Muslims represent? I mean, what do they worship? A stone, a cobblestone. They bow down to the cobblestone in Mecca. You understand? Give me 68. How do we get to America? On slave ships, right? You, did, did you think the Lord was going to tell us that was going to happen to us in the Bible? Why would he? We got to learn, but guess what, brother? You're wrong. Because we're about to read slave ships in the Bible. Right. Bring it out. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. But they just came out of Egypt, brother. You know Moses, you know the Lord sent Moses to Pharaoh, said let my people go. He sent the plagues on the on the uh, Egyptians. He split the sea. We walked on dry land through the sea. Right. Went in the wilderness for 40 years. Then we just came out of Egypt. God is saying we're going to bring you to Egypt again. You understand, brother? Did we go back, the 12 tribes go back into Egypt as a nation? Uh, 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 uh. Why is God saying he's going to bring us to Egypt again? You know what, what Egypt is for us, for the Israelites? Give me Judah 5 and 11. Give me that in Judah. What were the Israelites doing in, in Egypt? You remember? Let's read it. This is the book of Judah, chapter 5 and verse 11. Read it out. Therefore the king of Egypt rose up against them and dealt subtly with them and brought them low. And, what? and brought them, them low. The Israelites was brought low. Remember they used to be above all people. But they were brought low. Read. With laboring. With what? With, with laboring. laboring. It's like in America. All right, we were brought low with labor, and all we did was labor in this place. Come on. In brick. Uh -huh. And made them slaves. And did what? And, and made, made them slaves. slaves. What happened to us? And, and made, made them slaves. slaves. The Israelites were slaves in Egypt. You understand? That's why they needed the Lord to come and deliver them and save them. That's right. But God has said, I'm going to bring you into Egypt again. That ain't happened in the Bible. Give me Revelation 11. Bring it out. The book of, the book of Revelation. Chapter 11 and verse 8. Right. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually. Physically. Spiritually. Literally. Spiritually. This place is it's a spiritual place. What is it called? It's called Sodom and, and Egypt. Egypt. So this new place, brother, is a spiritual Sodom and Egypt. You understand? Why does a, the so-called white man put pyramids on the back of his dollar? What does he got to do with Egypt? Nothing. Egypt means slavery, brother. Between a rock and a hard place. So when the Lord said he's going to bring us into Egypt again, he's talking about a new Egypt. But this is going to be a spiritual Egypt. Because you're going to be a slave in this place just like you was in ancient Egypt. You understand? Does that make sense, brother?
That's right. And you know what the beautiful thing about that? The Lord left a record. You understand? So we don't got to be confused no more. We don't have to be controlled no more. Because we know what you did. We know why you did it. And we know how to get out of it. And we know what's about to happen to you next. You understand? Read it again. Deuteronomy 28, 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into slavery again. We're going to another slavery. But this time, read with ships. With what? With ships. With what? With ships. Let me get to America, brother. With ships. <laughs> with ships. <laughs> who is this? Who did that happen to? Go look it up and find out who went into slavery on ships. Guess who's going to come up? Us. Right. Remember we read earlier these curses are on us for a sign and a wonder? Where's the white man slave movie? Bring that out. When you, when, mm. who, who keeps making slave movies? Roots, 12 Years a Slave. Django, Birth of a New Nation, Birth of a Nation right. Emancipation. Mm. Those are all signs to let us know we are these people. God said these things will happen to us. It's more on that. Go ahead. And slack it. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Wait a minute. So the Lord said we wouldn't see it again. When we go and get when we go into slavery on those ships, that's it. Ain't no turning back. So how in 1948 did the people get back in that land, calling themselves Jewish? Isn't that contrary to the Bible? If God said when you go to this Egypt on a slave ship, the only way you're coming back is by his son, when he cracked that sky on a chariot? Right? So what, what would that mean? That would mean that the real Jews and the real people of God are still in that place. And the people that's in that place today acting like you are not the real people. Right. Come on. And then ye shall be sold. When you get off the slave ship, we're going to be sold, brother. Who was sold? Were we sold? That's right. That's how we got all these last names. All right. Come on. Unto your enemies. Who are we sold to, brother? What does God call them? God didn't say, you shall be sold to the white man. Read it again. And you shall be sold unto your enemies. Who are we sold to? Our enemies. Right. So now, why do they shoot us in the streets? Right. Why do they put us in the ghettos and the slums? Why do we get treated like this in America? Why, brother? We just gave you the answer. Why? That's right. See, God made an enemy, okay, and put him against you. Give me Genesis 25. Deep job. Give me Genesis 25 and 23. And this was set up from the beginning. That's right. Give me Isaiah 46 and 10. Give me Isaiah 46 and 10. The book of Isaiah, chapter 46 and verse number 10. So, brother, according, according to what we just read out the Bible that you say you believe in, you understand? Who are we? Not according to what we learned in America, in this Egypt, in Sodom, all right, where we were sold to our enemies. You understand? Well, we were beaten, all right, and destroyed. And they told us we was this, 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 and that. What does God call us according to the Bible? The Israelites. But do you have any doubt about that? Is that plain? It's, huh? You don't think it's plain? What, what, where's the confusion at? Oh, are oh, you saying, do you believe that we're the Israelites? Okay, okay, I thought you was, I, I, I got you, I got you. I thought you were saying it wasn't plain. Are oh, you talking about them? Okay. Right, but I'm going to show you something real quick. All right, read this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 46, and verse 10. Yeah. Declared the end from the beginning. What the Lord said? Declared the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not done yet, yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. What the Lord said? And I will, I will do, do all, all my pleasure. pleasure. So the Lord declared the end from the beginning. So the Lord already had this whole thing scripted out. We just planned it out. You understand? So the Lord is in control. Give me Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7. The Lord is in control. That's why we're supposed to fear God. You understand? Bring this out real quick. The book of Proverbs. Chapter 1 and verse 7. The fear of the Lord. What the Lord say? The fear of the Lord. If we feared the Lord, we would have never broke the commandments. Right. 
You understand? We wouldn't have to go through all of this. Because if you read Deuteronomy 28 and 1 through 14, are the blessings if we were to keep the commandments. Right. You understand? We fell it under these curses because we rebelled against God and turned against God. Right. Read this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Read. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. But we became fools. We despise the instruction of the Lord, man. Now we're in the hands of our enemies, man. Right. Give me the book real quick. Give me Psalm chapter 76 and 7. Give me Psalm 76 and 7. That's very important, man. So now we have to teach our people to fear the Lord. That's how you're going to return back to the Lord and be accepted of him. Then you get into repentance. You understand? Now you can apply what Christ did for you. Now you can start actually believing in Christ instead of just saying it with your mouth. You understand? Because you understand that God is great and terrible, man. You understand? Read this. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 76 and verse 7. Yeah. Now even thou art to be feared. What the Lord is saying? Yeah. Now even thou art to be feared. The Lord ought to be feared, man. I had a Christian tell me, why would I fear? Why would God want me to fear him? You understand? You have to understand these things. The Lord is a God that ought to be feared. Read. And who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry. Once the Lord was angry with us, who could stop this from happening to us? Who could stop the slavery and the judgment that he pronounced? You understand? Now, the Lord said we will be sold into our enemies. You know that we went into slavery by the so-called white man. You understand? So now, what is salvation, brother? Because the world teaches us that Jesus is coming to save anybody and all people. What is salvation? If we went into slavery, we just read it out of the Bible. All right? That the so-called black man went into slavery on ships and the Lord prophesied it. No Christian pastor is teaching this in the church. Right. Give me Luke 1 and 68. This is the book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 68. Right Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. And it's the New Testament. He's the God of Israel still. Because God never changed. That's a lie that we learn from the same people, okay, that gave us white Jesus. From the same people that told you you was a nigga. From the same people, okay, that beat your forefathers back in. That's where you learn these things from. But we never opened up the Bible and read these things. You understand? Go ahead. For he have visited and redeemed his people. He revisited and redeemed his people. Who are his people? Who are his people? The Israelites. Come on. And have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets which have been since the world began, that we should be saved. That what? That yeah. we should be saved from our enemies. From who? From our enemies. But when the Lord said, you shall go into slavery on ships and be sold unto your enemies, thou shalt see it no more again, meaning you're going to be in captivity and slavery until I come save you. From what? Who are going to be saved from? That's right. Right, so the oppressed has to be, salvation is the oppressed being saved from the oppressor. Or right. right, being saved out of the hand of his enemy. Out of the hands of the people that's in power. That got his foot in your neck. Right. Right? So now, brother, knowing that you're an Israelite, and knowing that us Israelites went into slavery, and we're still in bondage today, because even though we don't got chains on our neck, do you believe we're still in captivity? Give me Baruch 3 and 8 real quick. Let me get Baruch 3 and 8. Captivity is more than just having chains on your neck. Right. This is the book of Baruch. Chapter 3 and verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse. Because we just read it. We read those curses. And you read about it all throughout the Bible, even until this day, it applies. The Israelites, when you read the Bible, goes in and out of captivity. Right. Right? Babylonian captivity, Assyrian captivity, Persian and Mede captivity, Greek captivity, Roman captivity. You understand the Israelites are always in subjection to the other nations. Right. Why? Because of that curse we read in Deuteronomy 28. Read. And to be subject to payments. To be what? And to, to be, be subject, subject to, to payments. payments. We read earlier. What is the curse? You shall serve your enemies in hunger, in clothing, and in one of all things. You're subject to payment. You got to pay down tolls. You got to pay ins car insurance. You got to pay, pay taxes on everything. You got to pay for rent. You got to pay light bill, water bill. Life insurance, any bill he can, he's steady coming up with bills. Anything he can think of, he's going to charge you. 
That's what captivity is, brother. And guess what? Our people don't make enough money to keep up with all these fees. You understand? Go back to that. Verse 70, this is the book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 71. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. That's the salvation that the world is afraid of. That's why they don't want us to know who we are. Because if we learn who we are and who our God is and return and come back to our God and separate from this world, it's over. All these other great prophecies brothers are going to read today, okay? If you stay out here, you're going to hear what God is about to do. You're going to hear the Lord is going to turn the tables. You understand? And they're going into slavery next. You understand? That's what salvation is going to look like. But the question is, how do you receive salvation? How you get the kingdom, brother? That's, the, that's, the, that's what we got to figure out because that's the goal that we all should have. We should all be hating this place, okay, and waiting to get the hell out of here, man. This is the white man's world. Let him enjoy this place, man. We want America to be burnt down so we can get to our kingdom. You understand? Because we're the Israelites. God's chosen people. And it's not supposed to be like this. Go ahead. Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11 and 16. They got to repent. They got to repent too because... We because we read earlier that we were scattered in different places. But the majority of the 12 tribes is over here in North and South America. Read, read this real quick. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 16. And there shall be in highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Verse 11 and 11, it's like it. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 11 and verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant. The what? The remnant. There's a remnant. The majority is over here in North and South America, in the land of the North. But there's a remnant, read. Of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an inside for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So the Lord is going to gather his people, no matter where they are, from the four corners of the, ark, of the earth, because there's a remnant in every nation. So th that remnant that repent, wherever they are, and come back to the Lord, they're going to be saved too. That's right. You understand? Now, give me, bring this out. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 19, and verse 16. Listen closely, brother, because to receive salvation is very simple. You understand? Listen closely. The Lord, done, the Lord never asked much of us. He only asked us to keep his commandments. You understand? That's it. He said, I'll give you everything. I'll give you the, everything is yours. Just keep my, follow me. Don't follow nobody. Don't serve other gods. Come on. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 19, and verse 16. Yeah. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life... Brother, if you want to get the kingdom of heaven, listen to what Christ said. Read. Keep the commandments. Do what? Keep the commandments. Let me get the kingdom. Keep the commandments. Let me get delivered out of America. Keep the commandments. What we got to do? Keep the commandments. The Lord said keep the commandments. What did we do, brother? How do we get in this situation? We read it earlier. Remember? What did our forefathers do? The Lord made a covenant with us. He gave us laws and commandments. Right? He said if you don't keep the commandments, all these curses are going to come upon you and overtake you. Give me Acts 3 and 19. What did we do, brother? What did we do wrong? We didn't keep the commandment. Right? So the Lord now sent his son now. That's why Christ came on the scene. All right? He died and he bled. All right? So that we can repent. All right? We honor him by repenting and changing our ways. So we, re we have to repent from our sins. You understand? Read this. This is the book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. And do what? 
and be converted. Now, how do you do this? Because I, I went to church, and I repented, right? I went to church, I repeated out the pastor, and I repented. And he said, you saved. I said, I'm saved. I said, I'm saved. <laughs> and then I went into the world. You understand? Nobody's saved, brother. Christians walking around here talking about they saved. Brother, when you put the ED at the end of the word, what happens to the word? It's past tense. The Lord said, they that shall endure to the end, those are the ones that's going to be saved. If I walk around with the mentality that I'm already saved, I already obtained something, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to relax. Because I'm saved already. Right. You understand? So no. The Lord said, repent ye therefore and be converted. What does convert mean? Change. Right? How do we change? The Bible going to tell you. Listen to this. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Now give me Psalms 19 and 7. The book of Psalms chapter 19 and verse 7. Yeah. Repent and be converted. Well, how do we do this, Pastor? There's going to be a problem now because the pastor teaching in the church that the commandments are done away with. Oh. All you got to do is believe on Jesus. That's why our people in and out of church killing each other. That's why homosexuality is running rampant. Because remember, we're in a spiritual Sodom and Gomorrah too. So they pushing this. Right? Listen, we need God's commandments. This is our shield from a wicked world that we're in. Listen. The law of the Lord is perfect. What's so wrong with it? The law of the Lord is perfect. The law is perfect. What does it do? Converting the soul. What does it do? Converting the soul. The laws of God is what's going to change you. Right? Give me the book of Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. Right? The laws of God is spiritual. Read this. This is the book of Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. What for the law is holy. What? What for the law is holy. Christianity told you the law ain't good. It's done away with. Read. And the commandment holy. And the commandments are holy. Read. And just. What is it? And just. And they are just. They are right, brother. Come on. And good. And what? And good. And the commandments are good. Love thy neighbor as thyself is good. You understand? Thou shalt not have commit adultery is good. Read. Verse 13. Was then that what you 14. Tell? Verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. What is it? For the, the law, law is spiritual. It's put a spirit on you. Everybody got spirits. So what spirit are you moving in? Most people are moving with the spirit of the world. But when you keep God's laws, it converts and changes you because it put a certain spirit on you. You understand? So it's good to keep the commandments of the Most High God. That's true repentance. You understand, brother? So if I was a homosexual and I wanted to repent from it, that means I have to stop being a homosexual. Right. That means I need to be delivered from that spirit and that demon. Right. You understand? So the Lord said, repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. How do you do that? Read it again. Psalm 19.7. The book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Uh -huh. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right. Now what? Are right. right. What are they? Are, are right. right. Are right. Now the world is not right. This is right, brother. We have to come back to the covenant. Read. Rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure. Enlightening the eye. Doing what? Enlightening the eyes. The commandments of God are pure, enlightening the eyes, brother. You understand? So how do you get the kingdom of heaven, brother? What do we got to do? Following the commandments. What commandments? Right? You eat pork? You don't eat pork? Give me Leviticus 21 and 5. What commandments? Remember we read earlier, the Lord said that thou would observe to do all my commandments. You understand? Give me Numbers 15. The, the book of Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. And real quick, brother, who's the they? Is the Bible written to everybody? No. It's the Israelites' book. And they, so God is talking to the Israelites. Read. Neither shall they shave off the corners of their beard. Neither shall they what? Shave off the corners of their beard. It is a sin for an Israelite, not the white man, not the Chinese man. They can, they can shave their beard all they want to. It's a sin for us to shave off our beard and cut into it. We have to grow our beards out, man. 
Imagine a lion, a lion cutting off his mane. We like lions, man. The first thing a white man did is cut your beard off and call you a boy. You understand? We're supposed to have beards on our face, brother. Like men. The white man created that damn Gillette razor, man. And he even made a billion dollars off of it. Why you think it keeps growing back? Because it's supposed to be there. God said, but you don't cut your beard. What is it? Why why do you say that? Do you know what it, you know what the beard is and what it means and why we have beards? See, it's going against nature. And we do that and we follow the world and we follow man. You understand? Listen. This is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Beard! A badge of manly dignity. A what? A badge of manly dignity. What is it? A badge of manly dignity. What is the beard, brother? A badge of what? Manly dignity. So when a white man tell you to get this job, you gotta cut that beard off, he's taking your dignity. It's not their dignity. That's right. They don't gotta do it, he didn't give it to them. You understand? So repentance would be for you to do what? Not to cut it off, but to let it grow. You can trim it, make it look, you just can't cut into it and mess up your natural line. You understand? Keep your beard, grow your beard. That's a bad badge of manly dignity. You understand, brother? So to Go from that, you repent from that, and you start to keep that. That's what repentance is. Right. It's not repentance is not what well, Jesus died. We ain't got to test the old testament. You understand? Now let's get another one. Oh, you can bring that up. Come. The book of 2 Samuel, chapter 10, and verse 4. To show you how serious this is, brother. Listen to this. Wherefore, Hanan took David's servants and shaved off the one half of their beards. You know who David is? David is our king. Right? King David, the king of Israel, who the Lord said his heart was perfect with the Most High. Alright? So, they cut off his servant's beard, man. Right? His soldier's beards. Read. And cut off their garments even to the middle, even to their buttocks. Showing you, even in the ancient world, a sign to shame somebody and take somebody's dignity would to be what? Exposing somebody. You understand that? If somebody was to rip your pants off, you would be ashamed. But they also cut half of his beard off. As a shame. Read? So it's a shame actually for Israelite men to have that beard shade off like little boys. Mm. Read. And sent them away. When they told it unto David, he said to me, them. What, what do you think David's going to say about this? Well, it's okay. Y'all just come on in. What do you think David's going to do? Read. Because the men were greatly ashamed. They were what? They were greatly ashamed. These men were ashamed. Your forefathers were ashamed not to have that beard. But in America, do as thou wilt. The white man said, it's okay, it gotta be okay. Right. Master said, I can shave my beard. No, what did God say? Ah! Let's see what David said. And the king said, tarry at Jericho. What? Tarry at Jericho. Say, y'all stay over there. Go ahead. Until your beards be grown. What did he say? Until, until your, your beards be grown. grown. Don't come back, nigga, until you got a beard on your face. Right. I don't want to see that. So it's important, brother. It's something as simple as a beard is important. And... More than anything, God told us not to do it. All right? So we keep our beard. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15, and verse 38. Yeah. Speak unto the children of Israel. Speak unto who? Speak unto the children of Israel. Brother, you're an Israelite. That's right. So God is talking to us, right? Read. And bid them that they make them fringes. That they do what? That they make them fringes. God said bid the Israelite that they make them fringes. What are the fringes? Look at Right? All these brothers got fringes on. Right. Why do we have these on? Right? Because God told us to. Read. And make them fringes in the borders of their garments uh -huh. throughout their generation. How long? Throughout, throughout their, their generation. generation. When Jesus come, we can stop. Throughout, throughout their, their generation. generation. Are we still generating and making babies? Should we still do that? That's right. Come on. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. What? Your so brothers got the ribbon of blue on their fringes. We following instructions now. We repented. You gotta do the same thing. That's why brothers travel from far away to come out here and stand on their feet just for you, brother. Right. One brother at a time to bring them back to the Lord, man. Come on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe uh -huh. that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. And what? And do them. And who? And do them. And do them. And do them. 
them, this is a reminder, brother, that we the Israelites and we do got to keep the commandments. Right. You understand? I'm going to get one more for our pastor the next brother. Give me James 1 and 22. The book of James, chapter 1 and verse 22. Yeah. But be ye doers of the word. What the Lord say? But, but be ye doers of the word. word. We got to be doers of the word this time in these last days. This second chance that we got, brother, we got to be doers of the word. Read. And not hearers only. You don't just stand up here for an hour, brother, and listen and walk away and don't get anything. Don't be hearers of the word only, but be doers of the word, brother. All right, brother? Don't go nowhere, brother. I'm about to pass it to the next speaker. He's going to continue to edify you if it be the Lord's will. With that, I give all praise, honor, glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Quim Yashorela! 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 Quim Yashorela!